Hi everyone. Right now we're going to go over a few techniques that you'll be commonly using in lab. These techniques, especially the gram stain and the heat fixation, will be very important when you guys get to your unknowns. So with that, let's just jump right into it. First, as you can see, we're going to go over heat fixation. And what heat fixation does is um, it makes the bacteria stick to the slide better. And the way that we would do that is we would first add the bacteria to the slide. Um, so either if it's um, in a test tube, we'll just take it right out of the broth and you know take a, anywhere from one to three loopfuls and let that dry. Typically, the um, if you know that your bacteria is gram negative, you'll use more loopfuls just because that gram negative cells are much smaller than gram positive cells. All right. After that, we'll let them air dry and make sure that when you do this that they're comp uh, before you proceed to the next step that they're completely air dry because if you continue on to step three and let it pass through the Bunsen burner before it's completely dry you could cause the the cells to rupture because the water that is left there will will boil off the bacteria or the water that evaporates the bacteria will also evaporate with that water um, it's not impossible to get some uh, good results with this, but definitely does make it harder. All right. So some of the pros that, of doing heat fixation is that it kills the bacteria for one. Another, as you can see, is that it's easier to see. But the drawbacks to it is that the image comes out slightly distorted. Not so much in the fact that you guys would confuse um, rods with cocci, but just so uh, if there's a test question that says, you know, what's one of the drawbacks of heat fixation, it would be that the images come out slightly distorted. Next up, we're going to go over a simple stain. So with our simple stain, the concept's pretty simple, is that we have a cell here that has a negative charge, and we mix it with a dye that has a positive charge, and that dye binds to the negative charges on the outer surface of the cell giving it the color of the dye and that works by having a chromogen within the dye that's positively charged and as we know that opposites attract and that's how the the dye uh, sticks to the cell by binding to those negative charges on the outer surface of the cell because that chromogen has a positive charge and the way that we do this is that we'll first heat fix the bacteria onto the slide. After that, we'll stain for the appropriate amount of time. It depend. It can vary depending on which stain that you actually use. And then we'll blot dry. All right. And number three is going to be our negative stain. The way the negative stain works is that it's used for bacteria that are pretty sensitive for heat fixation. So on this one, we will not repeat. Will not use heat fixation. And the negative stain is kind of opposite to that of the simple stain in which we have a cell that has a negative charge and we're going to use a dye that also has a negative charge. And what we're going to be looking for is a clearing. And that clearing is going to show us the morphology of the cell. So it, basically rather than with the simple stain, we stain the cell itself. We're staining the background and leaving the cell itself unstained. And as I said before, it's for sensitive bacteria. And we pretty much just look for morphology and arrangement. And the good thing with the negative stain is that it allows for minimal cell shrinkage. And that's really good for determining cell size. The way that we would go about doing this would be to first add the stain to one end of the, to one end of the slide. And then we would add our bacteria to that followed by feathering out the slide and then finally by air drying. Like I said before, we do not heat fix. So some of you guys might have a question about how we feather out the slide. So the way we would do that is, as I said before, is we're going to add the bacteria to one end of the slide with the dye. We're going to take another slide and press it against the slide that has the bacteria in the dye pull it back to the edge of the slide until it kind of um, runs runs to the edge 
of the of the slide. And as it does that, we're going to push the slide that push the slide with our other hand forward. And what we do is we create a very thin one cell thin layer of the dye and the bacteria. And typically when you do your microscope, you'll want to start with the side that you ran to. So the cells over here on this side are going to be way too thick and it's going to be hard to hard to give you a good morphology and arrangement. But when you get over here, it's going to be like one cell one cell layer thick. And then if you need to, you come back this way from where you um, originated from. And finally, we're, being, we're going to go over our gram staining, which is a differential technique that tells us whether or not we have gram positive or gram negative cells. All right. Now, the difference between the two cells is that the gram positive cell has a much thicker peptidoglycan layer than the gram negative cell. Also, the gram negative cell has plasma membranes that surround the peptidoglycan layer. And we're going to see how the thickness and the orientation of the cell play an effect in our gram staining technique. Okay, so with that in mind, let's get into how we do this. So first up, we use crystal violet, and crystal violet is considered our primary stain. It will stain both of these, uh, both gram positive and gram negative cells initially. And this is done for anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. Make sure you pay attention to the instructions prior to conducting the lab. And then you'll do a wash, um, whether I think at the time I was using just regular sink water, but you guys might be using deionized water now. So after you do the crystal violet for about a minute and then you wash, you'll be using your, you'll apply some iodine. And with that iodine, um, it's considered a mordant. It helps the crystal violet stick to the peptidoglycan. And how it does that is it creates a crystal violet iodine complex. And that con complex just helps uh, increase the infinity that the iodine has, that the, sorry, that the crystal violet has for the peptidoglycan. All right, and again, you'll do a wash after about a minute. Next up, you'll have your grams of alcohol, and this is considered to be your decolorizer. Now, this is where the thickness of the peptidoglycan layer um, comes into effect, is that the alcohol shrinks the peptidoglycan layer and squeezes out the primary stain. But what it also does for gram-negative cells is that it causes the, the lipids here and causes this cell wall to become more porous, causing the iodine complex to leak out. Um, and with that, your cells would be decolorized back to how you originally had them before adding the crystal violet if it's a gram negative cell. But however, the lipids in the gram positive cell are protected by the thick peptidoglycan layer. And even though some of it is squeezed out, is that it does not become as porous as a gram negative cell. So it would retain the primary stain. Next up, we'll have our safranin, which is considered to be our counter stain. And that will then stick to the peptidoglycan layer of the gram negative cells. It will not stick to the gram positive cells because the gram positive cells are already taken up the primary stain. There is no more space for it to take up the safranin. Even if it does, the crystal violet is a darker color than the safranin. So we will be able to, or we wouldn't be able to see the safranin within the crystal violet. After the safranin, you would then blot dry. Please do not smear because then you'll remove your bacteria and then you'll observe them underneath the microscope. Some things to take home is that you don't want to over decolorize. When you de decolorize, it should be roughly about 10 seconds at the very most. After that, like I said, is you would rinse out with water and then you would apply that safranin right away. Um, proper emulsion of the, of the stains. Make sure that when you do this, you flood the slide, completely cover it. So you start that one minute you want to completely cover the slide and then you begin your 30 seconds to a minute. All right, you guys, hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions, shoot me an email. I look forward to hearing from you guys.